There are several indigenous groups in Honduras, one of which are known, you know, they're called the Garifuna. So they're an Afro-Arawak people. And there's a second community, the Mesquito, an Afro-Amerindian people as well. And I connected with some anthropologists at the University of Texas, Ted Gordon and Charlie Hale. And they founded an organization called CARC, which is the Caribbean Central American Research Council, which does work around race, rights, and resources. They had been in touch with some grassroots communities in Honduras. These communities were concerned about loss of land. They were in beachfront areas, which is prime real estate, or in the forest, prime real estate. And they lobbied the World Bank to provide a loan to the government of Honduras to do a study of land tenure as a means of advancing their land rights. So CARC was contracted to, to do this study of land rights. I was hired to be the principal investigator on the Garifuna side. And the coolest project, the coolest experience was putting on my hiking sandals, putting my hair in twists, getting my pad and pen, interacting directly with these indigenous leaders, working with them to do ethnographies. And an eth ethnography for them was, when was your community founded? Who were the founders of your community? How long have they been there? What do you plant? What do you grow? Where do you fish? Where do you have your festivals? Where do you bury your dead? And the idea was to really show respect for their culture and to value it by showing their long-standing occupation and the legitimacy of their claim to say, look, we've been here since 1797. We have a right to have our land rights recognized. I remember going to the Mesquisha, which is the, the forest in Honduras, and it goes over the border between Honduras and Nicaragua, getting in a boat, a canoe, um, this beautiful scenery, just vast expanses of water and forest cover, and doing this case study on this community called Pla Playa, which is the only Garifuna that's only Garifuna community that's located in the Mesquisha, sleeping outside under the lights, and just interacting and hearing Spanish, hearing Garifuna spoken, eating tapada, the Garifuna fish stew, and just a completely different way of being and thinking. And it was, for me, a really life-changing experience to have that time in Honduras. It was hard work, it was intense work, and it was fun. The most powerful grassroots organization was headed by two Garifuna women, the sharpest women in, Gua in um, Honduras. Really bright, incredible analysis of what was going on in, in Honduran politics how to advance their claims. I learned so much from them, Miriam and Gregoria. So that was, I, I'd say, one of the coolest projects that I, I worked on. I'd say the second super cool project from my perspective was a month that I spent in Panama. And again, this was with Ted and Charlie and Caribbean Central American Research Council. And they had gotten a grant from the Ford Foundation to do an analysis of indigenous and Afro-Panamanian organizations. So I got to know all of the cutting edge, social justice oriented organizations in Panama from both the black community and the indigenous community. And one day I, I was in a four by four stick shift driving across Panama, which was so much fun because I got to stop in all these really fun places and go to the local markets and eat the local foods and you know swim in the local rivers. And I connected with one of the indigenous authorities from the Nobe Bugle community. And he said, um, let's go to El Bale. I, I need a ride to El Bale. And I'm thinking, okay, it's probably just a few hours away. And it ended up being this insane four or five hour ride on this bumpy road with this thick cloud cover so that you couldn't see where you were driving and you were praying that you didn't veer over the dividing line into the other lane and head straight into a truck that was coming. It was absolutely terrifying. But getting to his resguardo, his, his territory, was phenomenal. It was beautiful, it was picturesque, it was fun, it was different, and it really felt like I was on an adventure. So I'd say that those are two of the consulting experiences that I enjoyed the most.